Not only was Karnak a great sacred site, the surrounding temple estate was an economic powerhouse and a place of immense wealth. Other images on the tomb walls showing priestesses bearing offerings testified to the important role women played at Karnak. Here they are seen with the tomb's owner. His name is Neferhotep, and he is the chief steward of the Karnak estate. The breathtaking artistic richness of the tomb testifies to his financial power. But despite his obvious status, the chief steward does not have final say over what goes on at Karnak. Evidence from another sacred site in the Theban necropolis reveals who really was in charge of the rich and prosperous temple estate. A steep flight of steps descends to the lower levels of another mysterious tomb. This is the tomb of Pabasa, one of Neferhotep's successors as chief steward at Karnak. But by examining the images on the tomb walls, experts have realized something extraordinary. Pabasa was not the one in charge at Karnak. In this relief, he is shown standing deferentially behind his superior as she makes an offering to the gods. These hieroglyphs confirm that she is the one who controls Karnak and all of its fabulous wealth. She holds one of the most important positions in all of Egypt, a title known as God's Wife of Amun. Egyptologist Dr. Mariam Ayad has spent several years researching the forgotten story of these elite women who served Amun at his great temple. They were more than priestesses. They were considered nothing less than the wives of the god Amun. In many respects, the god's wife of Amun was at the top of the Amun clergy at Karnak. They have a huge religious significance. They were royal princesses, having that connection with the royal house. I think the best analogy to really understand the economic and religious status of the God's Wife of Amun is to think in terms of a medieval pope and the kind of temporal wealth he controlled as well as the religious authority he enjoyed. <laughs> 